that was kind of around the time where I felt a little bit like a loner. It was pretty crazy because he turned it into like a book signing and a music tour. So we ended <laughs> up we ended up going on tour and we would be and I was in third grade probably at the time and we would be like signing books during the day and then at night we would go and play shows and I would like sing his songs with him. Oh. I spent a lot of time alone in college because I was super, I don't know, I didn't really felt like I connect with anyone there. And I would message people on SoundCloud and be like, hey, like, do you want any vocals? <laughs> yeah. And a million people like, ignored me and a million people like didn't respond, but a couple people did. And so that's kind of how I started doing it. And Rock Nation ended up finding me oh, wow. somehow and called me like about a week after we put the song out. And they called me and they were like, we want to have you come in and, and demo for Rihanna. And I was just kind of like... Hi, this is Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talk. Today I'm here with Naomi Wild. Hi. <laughs> so where were you born? I'm from LA, actually. Oh. Yeah. And your parents are from here as well? My dad's from Chicago, but my mom's from here, yeah. Oh, he met here for... Because he was signed to like RCA, right? So he yeah. met here for like, to move here for a creative. Yes. Oh. And your mom also, or...? Yeah, my mom was actually in Playboy Girls of Rock and Roll. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she um, she was kind of in the in the industry as well. Mm -hmm. And you're a grandma also, right? Was it platters? Or yeah, what? my grandma was in the platters. <laughs> what kind of music were they playing in the house when you were growing up? Uh, my dad played a lot of Peter Gabriel. Um, he played a lot of Enya. Um, yeah. What else? My brother, my brother was really into electronic music when oh. I was little. Yeah, so he played um, just like a lot of drum and bass kind of stuff. He was producing in our garage, mm -hmm. and he was kind of trying to teach me Ableton at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was probably ten, so I wasn't picking it up as quickly <laughs> as like you would think. Yeah. But um, he, yeah, so he was producing like drum and bass, and my brother introduced me to electronic music. So, oh. so. It was a mixture of different um, genres, but I got really into like Daft Punk and Justice and Yelly and this whole like cultural movement of tectonic dancing was happening in Europe at the time. And so my brother was like really into that. And he would have me like film him like dancing in the garage and he'd be mm -hmm. like, let's put it on YouTube. Oh. <laughs> and so he actually really, he got me, yeah, he got me heavily into electronic music. And at the time I remember like, it kind of separated me from a lot of like people at school because at the time it was kind of like when all the girls were listening to like Taylor Swift and like yeah. I also really liked Taylor Swift nothing against Taylor but I was super into electronic music so mm -hmm. that was kind of around the time where I felt a little bit like a loner because mm -hmm. I couldn't really connect with anyone my age who was listening to the same stuff and like really loved it as mm -hmm. much as I did so were your parents, so were they doing Chris a full time or did they have like other jobs? Uh, they had other jobs going on. Um, my mom stopped doing music sooner than my dad, so I don't have a lot of memory of my mom singing, but my dad was always like playing guitar in the house and had we had a piano um, in our house that he got when he was probably my age mm -hmm. in Chicago and he brought it to LA. And so he would write a lot of songs on the piano and we had um, like a Yamaha. Oh. synth in our kitchen and I would just like sit there with headphones on and just go through all the presets like like oh this sounds like space <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, kind of just like messing around with mm -hmm. it so so did he kind of already know from a young age that you were gonna be in a creative field like coming from no. a creative family not at all not at all so they were I, pretty open to like whatever you would do they were but I didn't mm -hmm. know that at the time it was like I went to a very uh, like liberal arts school um, it was, it was like a super hippie school. It wasn't really like, when I say art school, I mean, they weren't necessarily like teaching you like, this is how you draw, or like, this is how you, you know, this is how you write a song. It wasn't anything like that. It was like, here are some crayons, like go. Mm -hmm. So it was very like free thinking oriented and just a lot of space for, for like organic creativity, which was really cool. Um, but no, I never, my yeah. dad, my dad actually wrote a book when I was younger oh. um, on like divided families. And I was drawing a lot at the time and he used my drawings in the book to like illustrate it. And he put his CD in the back of the book. And the whole thing kind of started because I had been like sitting at the piano, just like blindly pressing keys and, and singing and he heard it. 
and he was like, oh, like, she can sing. Yeah. So he recorded me singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, like, in a studio. <laughs> and he put that on the CD, and the book ended up getting on the bestsellers list. Whoa. Which was, yeah, it was, cr- it was pretty crazy, because he turned it into, like, a book signing and a music tour. So we ended <laughs> up... We ended up going on tour, and we would be, and I was in third grade probably at the time, and we would be, like, signing books during the day, and then at night we would go and play shows, and I would, like, sing his songs with him. So, and I was in third grade at the time, and, like, I feel like when you're in third grade, whatever your life is, is, like, that's normal to you. So it wasn't, like, this big weird thing, like, oh my gosh, I'm on Mm -hmm. tour. My teachers would say, like, oh, don't take her because she's going to get she's gonna start thinking she's like famous oh. and like be all like egotistical mm-hmm. but to me I was just kind of like I didn't realize how crazy it was yeah. <laughs> um so that was kind of like my first experience with mm-hmm. singing singing live and I was terrified I was like there were nights where I like couldn't do it I was like I don't know I'm like too scared I can't do it <laughs> um but we would like cover Beatles songs and stuff too which was cool mm-hmm. um but yeah, so my dad really like brought me into yeah. it firsthand, I would say, for sure. How do you describe yourself back then growing up? Oh my god, I was so shy. I was so quiet. Like I couldn't order my own food at a restaurant. I would always have to tell my sister. I'd be like, "Can you order Same. like chicken wings?" Yeah. <laughs> like, um, so I was terrified of like everything, which is so ironic being that now like my favorite thing is performing and like being in front of people and meeting new people I'm like so social now I feel like Mm -hmm. so but I think music did that music brought me out of that for sure Mm -hmm. and my sister just kind of always kicking my ass being like you need to like speak up for yourself they're Um, both older or yeah my older my older brother and my older sister um yeah they really molded me a lot my older sister was always like really go-getter and like Uh, out of this world type of personality just in your face kind of thing and I was the opposite Mm -hmm. so like growing up with her was like challenging at times because she would get (laughs) pissed at me for being so quiet and like to myself Mm -hmm. um but she actually had a lot of influence on me she doesn't make music or anything but like a story that kind of explains what I mean about that is we were 15 and one day she said to me she was like okay like we're gonna go to a festival like we're gonna go see go to a concert she called it a concert and I was like okay like don't ask her any questions like just say yes yeah and she she ended up picking me up and we end up at hard summer music <laughs> festival and I was oh my 15. gosh like I don't remember how I got in I don't remember if I had like a fake ID like I don't remember how it went but um we're in this parking lot for hard summer and I'm just kind of like I don't think I'm allowed to be here and we go inside, I don't know how we got in. And the first set that I saw was Theophilus London and he was playing this song um, that he has called Humdrum Town. Mm-hmm. And I just remember like that was like the moment. Like I was like, oh my, cause it brought, mm-hmm. it brought the visual aspect to everything I had been listening to. And it was just this whole like subculture that I didn't even know existed. You know, I was so young. I didn't, I hadn't been to a lot of live shows up until probably that age but I had no idea like festivals existed Mm. and like I didn't had no idea that like people were on drugs and I was like (laughs) just like obviously like completely sober and I just remember standing there and and seeing that set and it was just this like aha moment and I was just like I connect with that like that's what I want to do like that's what I'm supposed to do and I can't really like see myself doing anything else Mm -hmm. um but it was yeah it was this really overwhelming like feeling of purpose mm-hmm. that I felt. Um, did he like school growing up? Did I like school? Yeah. Fuck no. I hated it. <laughs> I hated it because it was just like, I didn't really feel like I fit in. I, I was doing art and, and all of that and I felt like I kind of fit in there but it wasn't necessarily a lot of, it wasn't like songwriting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also couldn't read music and we were being taught instruments which sounds like I'm like complaining, but it was when it was awesome. But I actually like would have to fake sight reading tests. Like I played saxophone and violin, and I would yeah. just have to like fake it. But I think it made my my ear stronger for pitch. Like when oh. it came when it came down to like singing in the shower, I think like <laughs> I think that helped. <laughs> so, um, but you went to college, right? Yeah, I did go to college. I went to Santa Barbara City College for about two and a half or three years. 
Was that something that your parents want you to do? No, I actually totally wanted to do it. I so thought, you kind of like school, I guess. Well, I wanted to do it because the school that I went to initially was a very small school. There mm -hmm. was like 25 people per grade and the curriculum was very different. So everybody at that school was kind of like a brother or a sister to me, which was really cool. But once I reached like probably 16, I was kind of like, I felt claustrophobic. And all of a sudden I was just like, I want something more. Like I need to like, I got to get out of here and like see what, like what life is like for other kids that mm -hmm. don't go to this like really small school. And so um, I ended up switching schools, which wasn't the best experience, but I think I learned a lot, so it's fine. But I ended up going to Beverly Hills High School for the last two years of high school. And I, like, it was awful. Oh. I hated it so much. I was, like, riding a Vespa to school, and everybody else had, like, G-Wagons. <laughs> and I would, like, pull up <laughs> and park next to the chemistry lab. But, yeah, so I really didn't have any friends there. Um, and I just remember, like, going to school and having headphones in for, like, two years. Wow. Um, but then I graduated from there, and, and that's kind of why I was like, okay, let me try college. Because after all this, like, there has to be, like, somewhere that I'm going to like it. So I went to college... And it was like the most beautiful campus and the most, oh, ooh, that looks really good. <laughs> um, it was the most beautiful campus because it was like, you could go to the beach in between your classes and like chill on the beach. Um, so I definitely liked it a lot more, but it was kind of the same thing. I didn't have a lot of friends. I was kind of a loner and that's what led me to listening to a lot of, a lot more music. Mm -hmm. Um, what were you studying again? I was actually studying psychology and philosophy. Oh, was that something you were always interested in? Yeah, I was super, super interested in both of those things. So, but once I got there, it was like, I still didn't have like any sort of like burning passion for it, the way that I felt some other people did around me. And like, I just feel like if you're not gonna go 120% for something and like genuinely wanna do it, and it doesn't feel like work to you, then don't, why are you doing it? So I, it wasn't something that I could really foresee myself like sitting in front of someone and like giving them advice or, or listening. I feel like I'm a good listener, but I still, I feel like I can get across messages better in music <laughs> rather than kind of sitting in front of someone talking to them. Mm -hmm. What um, drew you to it initially? Like, what did you love about it? About music? Psychology. Psychology, it's just actually music kind of drew me to it because music is is extremely psychological. Like if you think about the way that it affects your brain and like the different endorphins that certain like songs like will make your brain react a certain way. And that was really what interested me about it because it's like you listen to a song and it can be so nostalgic and like completely transport you and put you in a different place and like that was just so, I don't know, that just resonated with me a lot. So I just connected the two and I was like, might as well try psychology, <laughs> even though that's such a small portion of like that, the giant thing that it is. <laughs> but yeah, initially I was into it because of that, like actually. Mm -hmm. and, and then I just realized like, I don't know. I spent a lot of time alone in college because I was super, I don't know, I didn't really felt like I connect with anyone there. Mm -hmm. um, what made you want to drop out? Music. Oh, so was your career at a certain point already? No, it wasn't. I started writing songs in Santa Barbara because I was such a loner. And I was sitting like on the smoker's bench in the back parking lot of my student dorm and was just going through SoundCloud and I was just going through beats, trying to find things that I liked. And then one day I randomly like, guess I wrote some like lyrics. <laughs> I say that like it's so weird. I, it was weird. I just wrote some lyrics and then I would freestyle them like into my, my voice notes on my phone. Mm -hmm. um, like over, I'd plug in iPod headphones into my computer, play the beat, and then I would kind of freestyle whatever I wrote onto my phone. So it was kind of like I was making an acapella. And then I would message people on SoundCloud and be like, hey, like, do you want any vocals? <laughs> yeah. And a million people like ignored me and a million people like didn't respond, but a couple people did. And so that's kind of how I started doing it. Um, and what basically ended up happening was probably like the fourth or fifth song that I wrote to one of these beats, I sent to, to this kid who was 16 and he layered it over the track and it's all like one take of a vocal. Obviously you can't comp like on your iPhone. Mm -hmm. So it's all one take and he laid it over the track. 
and we just uploaded it like on SoundCloud and it was just one of those things where like it just took off by itself mm -hmm. and I didn't have any like idea of how many streams was a lot of streams at the time but it was getting like millions oh, wow. and I was like oh <laughs> people like this and once I started doing that and people just kind of saw I was posting it then all of a sudden like people in my in my dormy facility were like I listened to what you did like yeah. that was so sick mm -hmm. and I'm like okay so now I'm cool <laughs> <laughs> like, but I mean like it just made me feel like okay what I was doing was good and people liked it mm -hmm. so I should keep doing it and I enjoyed doing it so that's kind of how it started but that song like really took off and Rock Nation ended up finding me oh, wow. somehow and called me like about a week after we put the song out and they called me and they were like we want to have you come in and, and demo for Rihanna and I was just kind of like what <laughs> like I just like didn't understand because I'd never mm. written first of all I'd never written indoors never in front of other people and I've never heard my voice like recorded professionally before so I was just kind of like terrified but like I'm obviously not gonna say no so a couple days later, I'm driving to LA and I, I meet the A&R that hit me up and he takes me to the studio. And it's like, I walk into the studio and Michael Jackson's gloves are like framed oh on the gosh. wall. He's like, did you know this is like where he wrote Thriller? And I'm just like, I'm not worthy. I'm not <laughs> supposed to be here right now. So I'm freaking out and he starts playing me tracks and he's like, uh, we want you to write, like, if Rhee was going to have a verse on this song, like, write her verse. And it was a DJ Mustard Travis Scott track. And I was just like, oh my god, like, what am I doing? Um, and, like, they didn't take the verse, and it's whatever, but the reason that that matters is because that was the first time I heard my voice recorded, like, oh. in a studio ever. And that was when I was like, whoa, like, I actually hear some potential, which mm. is which just really cool. Um, Were you working other jobs, like after you dropped out? I started working at a restaurant and I was serving at a restaurant called Eureka mm -hmm. for like three years I worked there. Um, so I, I ended up calling my, after the Rock Nation thing happened, even though it wasn't this like, even though I didn't, I didn't write the verse, like she didn't take it, whatever, it was so like, okay, I need to take this seriously now. And mm -hmm. so after that happened, I was just like, I called my dad one day and I was just like, hey, I'm dropping out of school, like I'm not going to class today and like that's it. And he, I was expecting him to be like, are you fucking serious? Yeah. And, but he was just like, okay. I was like, aren't you supposed to like, Like you kind of want him be to be pissed. like, surprised, yeah. Yeah, no, but I was like, I like drafted up like a PowerPoint oh to gosh. like back myself up. Yeah. and everything and I didn't even have to like go through it he was just like <laughs> I think like he secretly wanted always want I mean what He's artist wouldn't want their you. child to do yeah. the same thing like be in music if you're in music so I think he was like actually really stoked mm -hmm. but um he was just kind of like okay <laughs> that was it and he was like he was like I believe in you like do it and I was just like I'm gonna cry <laughs> and that was like it and then I dropped out of school and I was working at this restaurant um, and then around that time, I snuck into Coachella and I ran into a family friend who ended up managing me. And that's when it kind of started. And I started doing like writing sessions. And um, was that the Coachella that you saw Odessa? No, I snuck in in high school, and that's oh. when I saw Odessa. And I was like, "Who is that?" Yeah. And I just thought they were amazing. And I was standing there. It was kind of like the same sort of thing that happened when I was at Hard Summer, where I was just like, "Whoa." I was standing there and I was just like, I want to like sing with them. And I wasn't making music at the time or anything, which is why that's kind of funny to me. But yeah. You had like writer's block before the audition. I was, yeah. So I saw Odessa in high school and it just like changed me. And then after that, I started writing music about a year later and I had been going through writer's block for so long. I, I honestly think it was like eight months. It was weird because I had put out that song, it's called Hope, mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's the song that blew up, so I was kind of like, how do I beat that? Like, how do I do that again? For, that, for being so new to it, and like coming off the bat with like a hit song is like mm. confusing as fuck. And so I was like, okay, I need to try to like beat that and make it more like, but make it more me too, because I never felt like that song was really representative of like anything that I was doing. I just kind of, a lot of it was freestyled, so. Um, 
I was going through that writer's block and then I thought of the moment when I when I first saw Odessa and it was just kind of like it took me somewhere and that's what it takes you back to what we were talking about before with psychology like it was literally a moment that was so nostalgic and like transports you and so I that's how I was able to write the song is because I could like think about that experience and it was just so vivid to me um, so that's where like the inspiration for the song came from um, was just kind of remembering that and what it felt like and mm -hmm. how I felt and where I was standing and everything um, but your manager thought they wouldn't respond right yeah so I I had I d okay I wrote the song and then um, I finished it up with my friends uh, Adam and Nico uh, Nico goes by Nico the kid and Adam goes by Novador and I was like, hey guys, I have this song and I don't know how to record myself, but like whatever it is, like whatever it ends up being, like let's split it equally. And they were like, all right, for sure. And they're really, really good friends of mine. And so I went over there and they helped me finish up like some lyric stuff and then recorded the vocal. And then we just had the acapella for a while. Like I, in my mind when, when I was writing, I always was like, if I was gonna gift a song to Odessa, like what would I want it to be? And that's kind of, the question that I kept in mind while I was writing, we recorded it and I kind of just like sat on it for a while. Um, and it was probably like a month or so and then I woke up this morning, like this one morning, and I just had the weirdest feeling. I don't know how to explain it, like I always try and tell the story and when I get to this part it's like, okay, she's crazy. But I woke up and I was like, I really like feel like I need to send this to Odessa. Like, why the fuck not, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no. And so I texted my manager and I was like, hey, can you send this to Odessa? Like, I don't care if they don't respond, whatever. And she, she's like, you know, they're really big. Like, we're, they're probably not going to respond. And I was like, just do it and text me once you've done it. <laughs> Thanks. And she was like, all right. And then like two hours later, I was on the freeway driving because I was taking Ableton classes at the time. And I'm like in traffic and it's just shitty. And I'm like, ugh. And she calls me and she's like freaking out. And she's like, oh my God, like Odessa loves the song. Like they want it to be a single for the album, like freaking out. And I'm just like crying, like crying yeah. in my car on the freeway. Oh. Just like, oh my gosh, I did it. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, it was a dog. Um, and so I'm like freaking out. Sorry. <laughs> so I was like freaking out, like completely losing it. Cause it was like, not only did they respond, but it's like, they're my favorite band ever. And so I was just like, what is happening? Yeah. Um, and yeah, like that's pretty much how it went down. And then a couple weeks later they were in LA and I met Clay in the studio and Clay played me the first demo of the song. And we used the same vocal, like we never cut a new one. So that's just kind of cool. And the song isn't too different from, from what it was that day in the mm. studio. Um, and then a year later, it ended up like leaking right before it was gonna come oh. out. <laughs> yeah, but, but it was good. Like I've, it got a really good reaction and it was just like, I was ready. I was like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then they were like, do you wanna go on tour? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I've never really sang live officially, but sure. Yeah. And, um, so they were like, okay, well, we're gonna get you some in-ear monitors um, and it's super weird and different. So you'll just have to get used to it. And I was asking everyone about it. I was like, what it, what's it like performing with in-ears? Everybody just keeps telling me like, it's super weird. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of like, kind of freaking out because the show was coming up. Our first show was mm -hmm. um, Bumbershoot in Seattle. We were headlining. And long story short, I didn't end up getting my in-ears until like, sound check yeah. pretty much oh, before wow. and I was just like kind of scared because everyone had told me like you have to rehearse with them and I was like well I didn't <laughs> and yeah. the first show is going to be in front of like 15,000 people so it's fine. <laughs> Why is Anderson Pack such a big inspiration to you? Uh, at the time Anderson Pack was one of my biggest inspirations just because I like how carefree mm -hmm. he is with his music and for some reason when I listen to it it kind of reminds me of my dad. Um, yeah, and like who doesn't love Anderson Pack? Mm -hmm. He's just great. I, <laughs> I kind of want to, I just really like, want to be him, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> What's the inspiration behind Howlin'? Uh, the inspiration behind Howlin', it was really just like a product of being super fired up from, from touring. Like I had finally gotten to experience what it was like performing live and watching 
um, like the openers and like the way that they were growing through the shows and just kind of the way everything worked. And when I got back, I kind of had more clear of a direction and a vision. But the song itself is kind of just about like the chase, the chase between two people. Like when you when you're really into somebody, but like you're kind of trying to like play cool and you don't want to be like, I like you. You kind of want to be like, I don't really like you, but like you're cute. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're kind of like just trying to play it cool and act like you don't care. But I don't really think that that's cool. Like I feel like people should be just fucking open with themselves and be who they are and say what you want to fucking say because we're only on this earth for like how many years, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's about that. It's just yeah. about like being, being open and like saying what you want to say. How do you think your music has changed since the early songs you wrote? Oh my god. Uh, I tried so many different genres and I feel like my music now is just a lot more of a product of me not really giving a fuck and kind of being okay with whatever comes out and not really forcing anything and not trying to fit into one genre just like using whatever comes out and when it's weird like liking that it's weird and liking that it's different and liking the fact that it doesn't necessarily fit in one genre. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you see you've grown as a person since you were younger? Embracing how weird and psycho I am, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, like being really comfortable with that and having a strong personality, but, but being, being proud of it. Um, and, and just, yeah allowing myself to get to know myself by being being vulnerable and accepting the weird parts of myself and putting it into my art and then when I'm proud of my art I'm like okay I'm proud of who I am yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah what would you say have been your biggest challenges so far my biggest challenges I would say at least right now is um, working with different producers um, I work a lot with Eric Vaughn who has like co-produced most of my project right now um, but just in terms of like expanding my my little tribe of people that I work with, because I'm kind of trying to be left of center and I'm trying to come through the back door and have these different different sounds and different elements, like a lot of times it can be hard because LA, as great as it is, is like very um, it's very pop focused and very like urban and hip hop focused, which is awesome and I love all those genres and I actually like have. I draw inspiration from those genres, but um, I'm still not necessarily trying to make like radio songs, you know? Mm -hmm. So so finding producers has been difficult for me. What does success look like to you? Um, being happy, like being really happy with my art, because when I'm happy with my art, I feel really good about myself. So um, it's kind of ridiculous how much I let it affect me, like days when I can't write a song that I'm really mm. stoked on and I'm constantly on this thing of like when I, the day I write my best song the next day I have to beat it yeah. um, so I'm, I'm super hard on myself and that has been really difficult growing up with how much of a perfectionist I am but I wouldn't be where I'm at if I wasn't like that so mm -hmm. um, I would say that's pretty frustrating yeah. what does love mean to you? Um, it's like the most powerful driving force behind my art for sure um, I don't, love is everything. It's everything. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I can't really define what love is. I don't know who can, but I would say that it's the one thing that makes me feel human. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Last question. What do you want to be remembered for? Fucking shit up. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, um, what do I want to be remembered for? I want to be remembered for pushing, pushing boundaries and like, um, God, this makes it sound like I'm going to die. Like, um, I want to be remembered for pushing boundaries and, and, and really owning my own stuff and, and just being like a strong source of light for younger girls. I really want to, I really want to be there to inspire younger girls. And I'm like all tattooed and stuff and like I know that's not great and moms don't like that but I feel like I have a lot of, I don't know, I've grown a lot as a woman and I feel like I would love to pass that on to younger girls and I wish that when I was younger I had an older sister mm. like me to kind of be like it's okay <laughs> you know yeah um yeah I would say that yeah I love that thank you so much <laughs> yeah <This is> awesome. <laughs> thank you <laughs> bye guys bye